Lots of movies and TV shows either very directly, or as a discrete part of the world building, explore alternate history. More often than not, the alternate settings aren't entirely explained, and we're left wondering what in the world happened and why things are the way they are. So for this video, I'll be covering a handful of countries from pieces of fiction, including both actual lore and me just filling in the gaps myself. Obviously expect spoilers when it comes to all these pieces of fiction. Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Most of you are probably aware of the Hunger Games series, which takes place in a future North America called Pan Am. Much of Pan Am's history is shrouded in mystery, in large part because of the state's authoritarian nature, as it likely keeps its history secret. But we do know the original trilogy takes place around 300 years in the future, some 74 years after a major rebellion in Pan Am, where the 13th district was supposedly destroyed. Most maps from the series are used in propaganda settings, for example by the weather forecast on state-run TV. But I doubt the accuracy of these maps. They're cartoony maps only vaguely resembling North America, that don't even include the Great Lakes. I mostly write them off as pure propaganda, and only use them to get a rough idea of where the districts are. Looking at this map from Catching Fire, however, which is the most accurate one shown, and the only one not used in a propaganda setting, it seems to be regular old North America. Sea levels have just risen about 70 meters. Although of note is much of Mexico missing from the map. That makes no sense with how far above sea level Mexico is. So this is just an assumption, but given the map wasn't used in a propaganda setting, I'm betting that means the territory is just not controlled or claimed by Pan Am. What we're seeing here could perhaps be Pan Am's southern border with some sort of other nation state in Mexico, or simply territory it doesn't care about or wants to claim. Regardless, this is my rendition of Pan Am. The borders of the districts are not outright specified. We have the inaccurate propaganda maps to go by and some descriptions in the books. Their populations are also uncertain. All that has been verified is that District 12 has a population of around 10,000, being made up of just one town. There are also some numbers on the wiki for the other districts, but they're not verified anywhere else, and clearly they're not very accurate considering how low the numbers are. Even just one of the urban areas shown in the movies could probably host more people, so I came up with my own numbers. District 12 only consisting of one town in my head canon here is just capital propaganda. Really, it has several coal mining towns around the Appalachians. That said, this is still a devastated North America with a fraction of its real world population. It has endured environmental degradation, probably nuclear war, and a complete collapse of the US and Canadian governments. Now we don't quite live in a Hunger Games-esque dystopia, but that doesn't mean we're immune to breaches in our privacy, especially online. The sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN, encrypts your online data and helps to secure your personal information from hackers when you use free public Wi-Fi. It also masks your IP address, allowing you to browse the internet privately. On top of that, it's just really convenient in my opinion. Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. And of course, being able to change your IP address comes with other perks as well. With Surfshark's more than 3,200 servers in 100 countries, you can bypass censorship and find your favorite shows and movies that aren't available in your home country. Secure your privacy and improve your online experience with Surfshark. Enter coupon code NEATLING for an extra 3 months for free at surfshark.deal NEATLING. Link in the description. Even if you're a bit skeptical, you can support the channel and see if it's worthwhile risk-free as Surfshark has a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just go to surfshark.deal slash neatling or click the link in the description. Call of Duty Ghost from 2013 took quite an interesting approach to their world building. Rather than the usual Middle Eastern conflict or a war with Russia, in this war Latin America had unified to become a superpower rivaling the United States. The Federation was established in the early 2000s as a result of major conflicts in the Middle East that caused a global energy crisis. This crippled the West and established world powers, allowing Latin America to unify and monopolize their oil resources. Eventually war between it and the US would break out as the Federation hijacked an American orbital bombardment station, but despite the US being crippled by these bombardments, the front line would stagnate for a whole decade in the ruins of the Southwest. Eventually, the tides would turn in the US's favor, as the US captures the Federation's newly built orbital bombardment station, although what happens after is up to interpretation. While not the most realistic scenario, it does provide for an interesting superstate encompassing all of Latin America. Not all of the Federation joined voluntarily. Obviously, the occupied parts of the US are an active war zone, but Mexico and French Guyana are also unrecognized occupied regions, as the Federation had to conquer them militarily. The states within the Union are mostly also speculative. I assume they would mostly follow real-world national borders, perhaps with an enlargement of Venezuela, which is home to the capital, and hinted at being the founder of this superstate. Moving over to Asia, we have a pretty wacky country, where most of the 2023 sci-fi film The Creator takes place. 
At first, this country seems a little ridiculous. In all likelihood, it was just to avoid having China be the US's main competitor so the movie could make money on the Chinese market. But if we try to take it seriously, this could in my opinion be some alternate world where Japan became a major world power. Perhaps a world where they never fought the US during World War II and somehow managed to carve out an empire. There are already clear alternate history elements in the movie, with AI and robotics being decades if not a century ahead of here in the real world. So, I imagine this state is a surviving Japanese empire. In this world, Japan never aligned itself with the Axis powers and never fought the US. It somehow managed to sign a separate peace with the European allies without triggering a war with America. It eventually lost its war with China, but managed to establish a super state from its Southeast Asian and Indian holdings. At first, this state would have been extremely Japanese dominated, with cultural assimilation attempts and harsh oppression of the Southeast Asia's population. But considering the fact that this state managed to survive for more than a century, it eventually would have had to reform. By 2070, when the film takes place, New Asia has completely reformed and become a much more equal union. While Japanese culture and language is widespread, Thai, Vietnamese, Malay and other Southeast Asian languages and cultures are recognized and accepted. I imagine only Borneo, Taiwan and the Philippines could have been properly assimilated into Japanese culture due to their relatively low populations in the 1940s and 50s. But beyond that, local cultures prevail, making New Asia a super multicultural state where less than a quarter of the population are actually Japanese. But that's about all for now. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Enter coupon code NEATLINK for an extra 3 months for free at surfshark.deal slash NEATLINK, link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this in the future, and a big thank you to all my channel members. See you next time.